the occult than with politics. He further details how the Illuminati had begun to infiltrate and recruit from Masonic lodges throughout Europe. In his book, John notes how the members of Freemasonry are rarely Masons by profession and that many individuals who desired to join Freemasonry were after knowledge of a more occult nature. In the introduction of his book, Proofs of a Conspiracy, Professor Robison says, I have observed these doctrines gradually diffusing and mixing with all the different systems of Freemasonry, till, at last, an association had been formed for the express purpose of rooting out all the religious establishments and overturning all the existing governments of Europe. I have seen this association exerting itself zealously and systematically till it has become almost irresistible. Later in his book's introduction, he remarks, And when we see that the methods which were practiced by this association for the express purpose of breaking all of the bands of society were employed solely in order that the leaders might rule the world with uncontrollable power, while all the rest, even the associated, will be degraded in their own estimation, corrupted in their principles, and employed as mere tools of the ambition of their unknown superiors. Mr. Robison even sent his book to the first and former President of the United States, George Washington. In Washington's reply to Robison regarding the claims of his book, the former President says, It was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. The idea that I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of Freemasonry in this country had, as societies, endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets of the first, or the pernicious principles of the latter, if they are susceptible of separation. Of course Washington could little argue with Robison's assertions, since, in 1782, the very same symbol Adam Weishaupt chose to represent the Illuminati became part of America's great national seal. Further, in 1789, the all-seeing eye also appeared in France's Declaration of Human Rights, which is similar to America's Bill of Rights. In 1934, President Franklin D. Roosevelt was approached by America's Secretary of Agriculture to have the nation's great seal placed on one of America's monetary coins. Roosevelt embraced the idea, but decided that the seal should instead be placed on the back of the one dollar bill, and there it remains to this day. Those who are engaged in Satanism also make heavy use of the all-seeing eye. Instead of associating the eye with the Egyptian gods Horus, Ra, and Sekhmet, these black magicians refer to the all-seeing eye as the eye of Set. Set, as stated previously, is the Egyptian god of storms and darkness. Despite the fact that Egyptian mythology never associates the all-seeing eye with the Egyptian god Set, modern black magicians do. The Egyptian god Set is, in the eyes of Satanists, the very same entity as Satan from the Bible. They claim that Set is simply another name for the dark lord of the underworld that Christians speak of, to such the extent that one of the most famous satanic churches is called the Temple of Set. The Roman god Saturn is yet another mythological deity that they closely relate to the being that Christians call Satan. So. Predictably, the all-seeing eye is featured in countless books relating to Satanism and black magic. The symbolic interpretation of the pyramid which often surrounds the eye is also a repeating theme among occultists. The first of these interpretations is that of the Trinity, which is the Father, the Mother, and the Son. The second interpretation is that of the Infernal Trinity, who is the dragon, the whore, and the beast. 
The third symbolic interpretation of the pyramid is that of a phallic symbol. A phallic symbol is something that symbolizes the male generative principle. You see, in the occult, an upward pointing triangle is a symbol of the magical element fire, and fire represents the male principle. Aleister Crowley, easily the most famous black magician, made numerous references to the all-seeing eye as the eye of Set, or the eye of Satan, and repeatedly associated both the sun and the eye with Satan. In his book, Magic in Theory and Practice, he states, Satan, thou eye, thou lust, cry aloud, cry aloud, whirl the wheel, O my father, O Satan, O son. Sabah, being by number three score and ten, is a name of Aen, the eye, and the devil our lord, and the goat of Mendes. He is the lord of the Sabbath of the Adepts, and is Satan, therefore also the sun, whose number of magic is 666, the seal of his servant, the beast. Michael W. Ford, easily one of the most prolific black magic writers today, is even more open and blatant about the true meaning of the sun and the all-seeing eye. In his books, he remarks, The sun is also associated with the adversarial triad, being Shaitan, Typhon, Apophros, and Betz, a god of transformation. The devil, as an initiatory force, is considered masculine, thus is represented by the phallus, or source of creative life. In the tarot, the devil is attributed to Capricornus, and the Hebrew letter, Ayin, being an eye. The demiurge, Saturnus, is related to the number 666, being that of Sarath, or the sun. Satanus is this aspect in one form of the adversary, being rebellion, death, and chaos from stasis. The very force of the sun is in the eye of Satanus Saturnus. In the name and mark of the devil, whom I swear my spirit unto, I am myself the redeemer and bringer of the infernal pact, which holds no bounds, nor mortal strain, yet my desires shall be filled by the eye within the blackened triangle. Symbolically, the Averse pentagram represents the essence of the Egyptian god of darkness and storms, Set. Set, set on, is the opposing force of darkness, but intelligence and isolate consciousness. To be set-like is to be individual, will-driven, unbalanced. The center of the Averse pentagram is called the Eye of Set, or the Eye of Satan, the Adversary. Until quite recently, the one dollar bill and various resources associated with Freemasonry and black magic were the only venues the all-seeing eye had. And then, something happened. Use of this once guarded symbol skyrocketed despite the fact that its meaning remains veiled to the masses. It appears as the logo of the American Total Information Awareness Office, Great Britain's famous MI5, cathedrals, and of course, Freemasonry. The all-seeing eye has also undergone a pop culture explosion and, as of 40 years ago, has appeared in more than 30 major films and television shows.